In some instances, parents would do well to just step back a bit and objectively observe the behavior of their children. A lot can be learned about how to proceed proactively rather than reactively, as illustrated in this matter of disorderly conduct. Several years ago, when our three youngest children were home, they were ages 19, 21, and 23, I was also home recuperating from an operation. I was amazed at how busy the kids were, going to school, working, carrying on a social life. They were constantly on the go. Almost without exception, as they entered the house, the first place they went was, you guessed it, to the kitchen. Within an instant, food was heading all through the house. The kids left the house in the same rush they entered it, but not by way of the kitchen to clean up and put away their dishes and eating utensils. Those things stayed behind. At first, I got a little annoyed and was about to say something until I realized that it was not a big enough deal to make a fuss over. Still, I felt that it was inappropriate, so I decided to find a non-coercive way to deal with it. First, I want to know for sure just how big a problem it was. Without data, it is very easy to over or underestimate the size of a problem. So each day for a week, I just hobbled around the house, counting the items that were left laying around. On the first day, it was an even 60. I was astounded. The second day it was 54. I took data for six days, and it went like this. Day 1, 60. Day 2, 54. Day 3, 58. Day 4, 56. Day 5, 53. And day 6, 60. I felt I had all the data I needed, and now it was time to act. Rather than make a big fuss about it, I just made a simple graph that I taped on the cupboard door. Beside it, I put a note which explained the graph and which encouraged the kids to clean their dishes and put them away. Other than that, I didn't say a word. The results were immediate and dramatic. The next day, not a single dish or eating utensil was left laying around the house. That remained the case for two days. All the while, of course, I was graphing this and putting little notes of appreciation on the cupboard by the graph. On the fourth day, the line on the graph began to go up. Things were being left laying around the house again. There were four the first day, one the next, and so on for five days, finally peaking out at twelve. I did not let this get to me. Going back to old habits and behaviors is quite typical. It is called regression to baseline. Rather than being upset and saying some stupid, negative, punitive thing, I just kept putting notes of appreciation and encouragement on the cupboard door. Predictably, the line on the graph began steadily going down. Finally, after 39 days, the problem was solved, so I quit taking data, and quietly and casually and occasionally, I would let the children know how much their tidiness was appreciated. I recall this to encourage parents to be slow to anger and to look for positive, quiet, pleasant, even fun ways of dealing with such annoying behaviors as messiness and sloppiness. It is never necessary to approach such behaviors in anger, disgust, and harsh ultimatums. Never. If you have found ways of helping your children improve their tidiness without being negative, let me know. I'd love to hear from you and to be able to share your successes with other parents. And by the way, let me know if I can quote you by name. I'll be waiting to hear from you.